previously on the Inges Channel. It just cuts the throttle out. Oh, it does cut out, doesn't it? Yeah. Once it's figured out, it's gonna fly. And As you guys know, Lord Kurt was struck down with the Coronis a couple weeks ago, but uh, he is done quarantining. Finally, but uh, we're back at it. We are freaking back at it. Today, I'm hoping to get a little bit of stuff done. Right now, my main priority is getting this tank. Um, I don't want it to sit like this any longer. It's got a dent here that I have to patch, so I need some body filler. We're back from Walmart with the goods. And I also did decide to fill the screw plate for the emblem that sticks on the tank. Um, for the design, the new design I have for this thing, I actually don't want those. I have a new plan for the build, <laughs> as far as the appearance goes. Um, I cannot wait to show you guys. I don't even think I will show you until the actual reveal of the bike. I let the color schemes kind of sink in and, and over the weeks and stuff we've been working on this, but then one day I thought of something a little crazy. Like, I think that it's gonna make this build completely unlike any other build. I'm sure there are some out there with the design that I have in mind, but I haven't seen it. I also forgot to mention that we're actually building the second battery. Lord Kurt is back and we're on the second battery build. He whipped up the design. He's gonna start building this thing tomorrow. As you guys know, uh, I'm not much help with the battery. <laughs> so I'm working on all the appearance stuff and everything else that I can work on. So I'm doing the tank right now, of course. Once we finish modifying the tank as we want to add engages and whatnot onto it, um, I will give it a complete paint job, but we're not gonna keep the paint. And I'll give you more on that later, don't worry about it. I am also starting on designing the seat for this thing. Uh, we have some ABS plastic right over there. A lot of you guys know from our first video or second video, I can't remember, but we tried to design the seat with cutting board, which was the perfect thickness of plastic we needed, but we didn't realize cutting boards actually use a little layer of wax as well. So the plastic was not sticking to each other and it was not gonna work out. So we got ABS plastic, Kurt has ABS glue that I need to grab from him, but then I can start designing the seat pan and, and then get that upholstered as well. So we'll have a fully modified seat that's gonna fit perfectly designed for this bike. You guys remember that the battery discharged itself over a couple months of sitting at down to 14 volts. So it could have permanently damaged the battery. We're hoping not yet, but Kurt is actually charging it through this discharge because the BMS wasn't letting it charge over 107 volts. So we're really hoping uh, that all works out. But besides that, I'm getting started on everything else. I do want to get the headlight assembly started as well and I'm gonna get those gauges and everything ordered. I'm gonna have to figure out the turn signal and all that kind of situation as well. Honestly, I'm very excited to be back at it and I couldn't be happier, so let's keep going. And you guys remember from last video, we're facing a problem where it's cutting out. At a certain throttle, it would just cut out and then it would come right back, but every time it would cut out. So he's been messaging Fanny, the uh, customer support for Kelly controllers. She may be sending, it may be a faulty controller. I think that's our main suspicion yeah, I mean, at so, this point. So we tested the resistance. She said test resistance from positive to U, positive to V, positive, and then from negative, you know, net U to negative and on through that. Sent it to her, it tested out like it'd be fine. So it would have been something they would ship out. All the resistances were the correct specifications but it was also grinding. So what would happen is when it would spin and then, so this would turn and when it would stop, it would go and would like wiggle back really and forth. You may noise. have seen that. So I had grounds to believe that there's something else wrong with the controller. We just did the last set of changes that she suggested. She said, turn regen off. And you'll notice now with regen off, when it stops, it stops. So there's no yeah. grinding. So what's happening is it's trying to regen when there's no movement. And so the controller is sensing movement when it shouldn't be effectively. Mm -hmm. So there's an issue with the controller. So what we've determined is this is probably a bad unit and we're going to get a replacement. She said that she would send one out as replacement. One of the suggestions was it's gearing is wrong. So of course it's not going to have any torque. It's geared to go 200 miles an hour. As people call the wheel expanding when we ran, when we crank the throttle. So I did do math on RPM of the motor based on the voltage we were using, what that translates based on the tooth reduction, when I designed what number of teeth to put on the sprocket in the front in the first place. So I don't think it's terribly wrong, but what I want to do is get a stopwatch set on the side, counting up, 
run it at full throttle, watch that tape on the piece of the wheel there, yep. and see how many revolutions it does in a given amount of time, and then calculate what the RPM of the wheel is times the direct diameter of the wheel times 2 pi r, right, to get the circumference, and then figure out what that converts to in miles per hour. So what is it actually geared to run at at full voltage, full power right now? And we'll figure that out. If it's, if it's way off and it's like 250 miles an hour, well, shoot, that's a gearing problem. The patrol might not be bad. Maybe I've just got asking too much of it mm. current-wise. All right, so he's taking it on that test run. While he's gone, I'll just summarize what we did. We did the high, high frame rate uh, stuff. The, re the wheel spun 36 times in one second. He did the math. The math wasn't really lining up with the gearing and how many rotations the tire made, whatever. But he definitely found that we needed a larger rear sprocket. Right now, he's just testing it out. We did turn regen off as well. We're just back here. We're working on the CB750 again. First off, we're gonna be putting this big old sprocket where this little one is here. And then second, we're gonna be, I don't know, are you planning today at least, are you planning yeah. to start this uh, so second battery build? So run through is I'm just gonna get it all designed. So I'm taking the bus bars that came with the other cells and just using them to, they're gonna be soldered on, but snipping them to the right length and using them to bring it all together. But it's ultimately gonna be discharging out of here I'm gonna make it run through here to this side. So I gotta basically design it before I start putting it together. So right now everything's just being set on there. If I were to knock something, it would probably blow up. So be real <laughs> careful. But I just wanna make sure that before we start putting it together in sections, it's all designed. Right. So we're designing it out. We already made sure this size fits on the bike. So it's gonna fit right on top of the motor. Uh, it's perfect spot yeah. for And it. this is the shape pretty much that we're this going with. This is what with. it's gonna be. This yeah. is how it's gonna look. It's gonna be about this wide. And then it's gonna to come to here and then taper back to that little narrow section in the middle there. But yeah, we, you guys saw the high speed footage real quick that was uh, the tire spinning. Yep. And for some reason, in spite of the gearing of 38 teeth, 11 teeth, 5,000 RPM, my math said it should be 112 miles an hour. Somehow it was spinning at 165 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever the cause of that is, we just did some reduction calculations and I got a 57 tooth sprocket that we'll put on the back there that should bring it down to you know, about 110, 115, something yeah. like that, based on what it was doing. Yeah, um, and so we, the, we had this custom made too. This yeah. We could not find sprocket, anything the size we needed. Specialists. They do a good job, actually. I was impressed. It was 120 yeah. bucks, plus yeah. a little bit of shipping. So it Super is lightweight, expensive, but aluminum it's an aluminum sprocket. You just tell them what model the bike, the bike is, how many teeth you want, if you want any special get, uh, you know gadgets added to it. Yep. And it's just bolt patterns just right, so we'll just get that added on there. Unfortunately, it's making the chain there's no chain link that is made standard to this size. Yep. So we're probably going to need to start putting the two. We have two new ones, you know, yep. splice them together and get a chain that's long enough to go around that because that's going to increase the <laughs> yeah, chain size. Yeah, you guys can see fairly that. significantly. That's, it's going to be insane. So, yep, so that's pretty much what we're starting off with. We're also going to be, you guys know the, the drill with this battery. It, it depleted all the way and we're trying to get it back up to voltage. And so we're charging it through the discharge port right yeah, now. Yeah, the reason for that is. We charge it through the through the charge port, and I don't want to turn the. I could adjust the BMS settings a little bit more, but ultimately what it's doing is, it's starting to have the high cell and the low cell separate too much, and so when it gets above like a 0 0.02 volt difference per cell, it shuts off and balances, and so it'll just never be able. It's taking too long to charge it up, so I'm just charging it through discharge. I'm leaving it balancing while I'm charging it and watching the cell voltages. What it does is it prevents it from cutting off. So then once it gets up to a reasonable voltage, we can disconnect it, put it back through the ch to the charge port. Um, I just think that we need to just kind of get it up to full voltage and then yeah. see how the cells are doing afterwards. But it says, it says where, you, where you leave it. So anyway, you guys know the situation there. We're just trying to get it back up to its its former health. And we also have an upgraded controller coming. That's right. 50% so, more amps. Yeah, 50% more amps and uh, probably just better suited. But we are going to start off by changing out this sprocket. All right, and just like that, we have the wheel off. So here's the old sprocket. I won't bore you to death. And there's the new one. How about that? Boom. We have three ages of chains here. This one is brand new, never ever used or installed. This one is still brand new, just installed for a few miles of riding. And then this one is like probably 55,000 miles on it. <laughs> so we're taking out the really old stuff and splicing the two new chains together and uh, getting that bad boy operational. He got the battery tentatively laid out. Move along. Oh 
shoot. Dang, literally only a couple links. Alright boys, a few, like a long time later. <laughs> if you guys care about timeline, you guys can see I have a new car and like that's pretty much where we're at on this video. Kurt just got the chain on and look at how crazy that looks. That is freaking insane. So we're just tightening up the chain now and we'll get back at it, dude. I'm excited. There's lots to do and uh, so we'll just keep this video rolling. So let's just... What you got? Well, we got an upgrade on the drivetrain here. So we got a new sprocket. We do have an upgrade on the drivetrain. That's we right. We just got it. 600 amp uh -huh. controller now. 50% power boost on the controller. And we'll have another. This is like a 40% gear reduction, something like that. So we're going to have a lot more torque. Yep. Should be, we're gonna, should be good. Oh, yeah. Twice the power, at least. Yeah, dude, it's gonna be it's gonna be a beast when it's all done. Well, boys, we just sold the CX500. We are ready for the first test ride after the new pairing of the new controller and the new sprocket. Kind of not finalized, obviously, not knowing what it's gonna do, but we'll just start off high and see what it can handle, and then tune it down if we need to. But yeah, well, let's see how it goes. Let's see what it does. Okay. It's still cut out? But it started pulling when I got it up higher. So I'll have to just dial back a little bit on one of those settings and it might be able to, to rip. Dude. Hey, you heard it when I went past you that second time. Uh-huh. I gave it some throttle and it stayed. Okay, it stayed good. Powered. I'm gonna take it down that side stretch and see if I can get it to a little bit of higher speed and see how it feels. Uh-huh, all right. Well, we definitely are still working out some issues with, uh, well, with such a huge sprocket in the back, the chain kind of rubs as it's going underneath. Just little things here and there definitely that we're gonna have to figure out still. But on another note, this bumper is looking real nice. It kinda cranks when you get it up a little higher. Does it? Yeah. How does it feel compared to last time you rode it with the different components? It feels, I feels way better. Way better, I mean, okay, good. I gotta fine tune it. If I can get it so it's not getting as much power right away, it might prevent it from shutting down at the at the, start. at the very end or bottom end yeah but once you get past like 20 miles an hour and you crank it it, it was it was shifting me back in my seat which obviously that's good grip here but it would right when I'm, I'm sitting there my weight's on it it'll still push me back right that's crazy so dude. we'll see what it specs out at but i think yeah. after i tune it down it'll be moving pretty good motor's cool not even any heat at all So at this point in the video, it gets very scattered. Kurt is building a battery and I'm gone at this point. So he actually took footage of what he was doing, which I'm super thankful for. So this is kind of what he's been doing. Uh, you guys can see just welding a battery box and making and finishing up the second battery, which turned out amazing. So here we are in the present day, finally. And Kurt finished up that battery. That second battery pack, it looks so small right here, but it's actually like 50 pounds and it's pretty decent size in person. That is going to be going right under the seat there. Kurt did have to redesign it. You guys saw the original scheme, so you guys can tell that this is a redesign because it actually did not fit where we expected it to fit with the first design. And with that complete, we are ready to ride this thing out to my parents' house for their welder <laughs> and get that battery battery pack installed and then the drivetrain will be 100% done except one thing never mind it's not going to be 100% done there is actually a huge component that we're going to be putting on after this to uh, to make this thing freaking insane I, I cannot wait to show you guys what that is also I want to say thank you guys so much for bearing with us through tons and tons of time between this video and the last video both of us have full-time jobs you know outside of YouTube and um, as much as we like the channel to be at the point where we could all, you know, always be focusing on builds like this, 
Um, it's just not at that point. And we have full-time jobs, we have, you know, life to do. And coordinating between me and Kurt, you know, it's two different people, two different lives that we have to do this in between. So there's just a lot of weird time gaps in this video. We're very excited to get back on the CB750 build. Um, and I, I mean, it's turning out amazingly and I can't wait to finish it up, show you guys what we have been envisioning this whole time. But we have huge plans for this thing, and I cannot wait to get this thing finished up. I can't believe that the second battery pack is done and the accessory lines are all run. So all these connections here connect straight up to those ones on the bike. And uh, Kurt just did an amazing, phenomenal job on this build. I, I mean, I can't believe the amount of hours he has put into this thing. I mean, he has been the spearhead on this whole thing. I mean, he does the math, he does the battery builds, he understands that stuff a lot better than I do. Like if this was a gas bike, I would ar already have had it running, but electric stuff is the stuff that he knows everything about, and I, I know very little about it. <laughs> and so he has been an incredible, I mean, he's basically had this build. It's basically been his build so far. So I can't wait till it's my actual turn to get to work and whip out my section of it, you know, the appearance, uh, wiring, that kind of thing. Anyway, that is gonna wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. We would really like to have this be more of a full-time thing, like us actually focusing on cool stuff, building stuff like this, and uh, and really just improving the electric market right now, because it's still a new kind of thing, electric motorcycles, and a lot of people are starting their own electric builds now that it's becoming more mainstream. And I mean, we would love to just do this full-time, you know, because there's a lot of stuff. Next video too, you will see, there's a lot of stuff we're doing that is one of a kind on this build. It's something that is a theory for a lot of people, but we're implementing it. We're, we're doing it next video. And uh, I, I couldn't be more excited about it. So stay tuned guys, there's lots more coming. Very, very cool stuff coming. And uh, we both appreciated having you guys with us and all the recommendations and all the comments you guys have given us. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching guys, catch you next time. And next video, we're gonna be focusing on the Chicken Hawk SL550 exhaust.